So if you just want to know, David, should I go out and buy the Lego Lord of the Rings Rivendell set for 500 US dollars? Is it really worth it? Yes. Yes, it is. That's it. If you want to click off the video, you can. But if you want to see all the details, the absolutely mind-blowing Lego techniques in this set, truly extraordinary minifigures, stick around. So here it is, the Lego Rivendell set. It'll launch on March 5th, 2023 with that price tag of 500 US dollars. You'll be getting 6,167 pieces, 15 minifigures by Lego's count. However, if you include the statues that are part of the set, it's really 21 minifigures. So already looking at a very good value. So full disclaimer, I've actually known about the Lego Rivendell set for about six months now. I actually got to see it hands-on in person back in September of 2022. So I've known for a while that this has been coming. But not only did I get hands-on with Rivendell, I also got a one-on-one -on -one interview with one of the nine Lego designers who worked on this set. So when I first saw Rivendell, I was literally speechless. First off, I didn't know Lego Lord of the Rings was coming back at this time. It wasn't even rumored when they showed us the set, so that was a shock in itself. And then for it to be this amazing minifigure scale Rivendell, yeah, quite the reveal for all of us Lego ambassadors. So I do want to thank Lego for sending this set over for review. I've only had a few days with this actual physical production copy of the set, but like I said, I've spent months thinking about my thoughts and what I wanted to say in this review. This has been kind of a long time in the works. Obviously, I couldn't say anything until the reveal of the set, but now I finally get to share my thoughts, let you know what I think of the LEGO Lord of the Rings Rivendell set, and whether it's worth that $500 price tag, whether this stands amongst some of the best LEGO sets of all time. Spoiler alert, it does. With that said, I do want to show the back of the box. As you can see, this thing is just gorgeous. From any angle of the box you turn it, it is truly fantastic. I love with what Lego's done here, especially on the top, seeing all of those minifigures. Now, I do want to disclaim that while I have watched Lord of the Rings, even the extended editions, many times, as well as the Hobbit trilogy, I'm not a super diehard fan. I don't know every little nook and cranny of details, so I might miss something when reviewing this set, but I will try to cover just about everything that I see. I'm sure there's going to be at least something that I either mispronounce or don't know what it is, so I do apologize for not being a complete diehard fan, but bear with me. With that said, let's jump into the in-depth of Lego Rivendell. So this very might well be the longest in-depth portion of a review that I ever do. There is so much to cover about Rivendell. Dozens of features and details and literally over 15 minifigures. What really shocks me about the figures is Lego had to go out of their way and make so many new molds and prints just for one set. This is just unheard of for a Lego set like this. Now, I should note that while there's 15 minifigures, we also get six statue minifigures. And while most of them are pretty much the same with just different hair and a dual-sided face, they are counted as minifigures in my eyes, bringing the total to 20 one minifigures in this set, which is just absolutely crazy. And in fact, I don't know any other Lego set that has 21 minifigures in it that's currently being produced. Also pretty crazy is we're getting six brand new weapons. These are six new molds just for weaponry for men, elves, and the dwarves. This is just really awesome and makes this set that much more special. And moving on to minifigures, first up we have Bilbo Baggins and his old age after he's given up the ring, although he does come with the dual-sided face, that really shows that he wants it back from Frodo. You're also getting an extra pair of legs using some headlight bricks that definitely look a little interesting on Bilbo. 
Next up, we have Elrond with a brand new Elvish headpiece. So those ears are actually dual molded. That's a first for the elves. Previously in the old Lord of the Rings sets, they were printed. Now they're dual molded. As you can see, there is a dual sided face for Elrond. And there's an extra little addition here. There's two different options for his legs, a printed two by two curve slope, as well as the normal drapery printed piece as well. Legolas is the next figure with also that same hairpiece as Elrond, except it's in blonde now. And then he also has dual molded legs, elevating this figure, making it look definitely a lot better than what we got in, say, 2013. He also comes with, of course, his bow and arrow. Overall, a great figure. Next up is Aragorn, and I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite Lego figures of the set, not just because I love the character, but because for some reason I feel like they just perfectly captured him, like perfectly. I love the dual-sided face on this figure especially as well. For our dwarves, we have Gimli with the double axes. I really like the way this figure looks. And yes, that helmet is brand new. And I believe the beard piece is also new. It's not being utilized, I think, from older Hobbit sets. So Lego is just bringing all new molds for this set. So many molds. All the molds. And not only does Gimli have metallic arms, but also a hair piece that you can attach as well. And no dual-sided face, surprisingly. Next up is Frodo Baggins with, of course, the one ring to rule them all. I love this secondary face on Frodo. It looks fantastic. If you take off his cape, he does have dual-sided torso printing. And then just like Bilbo, he has these extra legs that you can attach to make him sit and also look a little funny on the backside. What would Rivendell be without Gandalf the Grey? I love this version of Gandalf. He looks spectacular. There is printing everywhere on both sides of his legs. You'll see here in just a minute what I'm talking about. You can take his beard off and see a very interesting expression. But yes, there is printing on the backside of his uh, caped legs. Looks really good. And just like Elrond, he has an extra pair of legs utilizing that two by two curve piece. And it will be utilized for the council section later in the review. Next up is Boromir with his printed shield. I believe that's a first time piece. And I also think Lego knocked it out of the park. I feel like his expressions here are perfect. I love the secondary expression. It definitely reminds me of a certain scene from the Fellowship of the Ring. And then there is, of course, dual-sided torso printing if you take the cape off. Next up is the Hobbit Mary with, of course, his carrot that he has to steal from the farmer and gets caught and of course goes on the adventure with Frodo and Gandalf. This figure also has dual-sided torso printing and a dual-sided head as well. After that we have a fan favorite of course that being Sam with his frying pan. I love the way his uh, pants look. It like kind of goes from the actual mini legs to the torso and he also has a great dual-sided face expression as well as of course dual-sided torso printing on this figure as well. Our last Hobbit is of course Pippin with what I believe is to be lettuce so that looks very funny with him and then we also have a printed scarf that is not only on the front side but can also be seen on the back torso if you take the cape piece off. He also has a great dual-sided uh, expression for the head. Next is another dwarf. It's Glowin or Gimli's dad. I'm surprised that this figure was included in the set. You can see him, of course, in the council scene from Fellowship of the Ring. The figure is similar to Gimli because it has the same uh, beard and hair piece, but in white. And then, of course, all new torso print on both sides, as well as a new head print. And then we have two Elvish Smiths. The first one is female with blonde hair and a dual sided printed face as well and dual printed legs. I think that looks really good. And then we also have the male Elvish Smith who has a sword in this case and you can switch which sword the Elvish Smiths have. And then he also has a dual sided face as well. Lastly, we have Arwen and as you can see, she's in her white outfit and even has the elf stone around her neck. Very cool, and then we also have a book that comes with her, as well as, again, that new dual-molded headpiece. Unfortunately, I feel like I have a defected dual-sided uh, printed head here where the eyes seem a little too shifted from the mouth. Maybe it's just me. Technically not considered minifigures, but I consider them minifigures. We have the statue people as 
I'm calling them. As you can see, they look really good. They all have the same dual-sided head where one expression is kind of stone-faced and the other, <laughs> pun intended, and then the other is a more like muted face, I suppose. And then we have some different hair pieces as well as dual-sided torsos. You might have noticed that the hobbits, dwarves, and men, as well as elves, all use different leg sizes. That is completely intentional and supposed to obviously show how they all vary in size in universe. So to my surprise, there is only just 13 stickers in this set, which is really good. I'm glad Lego is reducing those. And in fact, there is an incredible amount of printed pieces. It might be the most of any Lego set. And we'll take a look here in a little bit as to why that is. As for the instruction booklets, they look fantastic with this great art on the outside. There's three different instruction booklets, each with a different section. When you open up the first one, you're greeted, of course, by the usual introduction of Rivendell or what the you know set is based on. But I really want to highlight this, that this set uses nine different Lego designers. I have never seen that before. There's also a really cool callback to the original wave of Lego Lord of the Rings from 2012 to 2013 as seen here. So it definitely gives you some major nostalgia vibes before you start building Rivendell. All right, so I've kept you guys waiting long enough. Here it is, Rivendell with the minifigures now on it. So hopefully giving you guys a full scope and scale of the set. Don't worry, we're gonna be doing some comparison to other Lego sets very soon where you'll get the full idea of the scale. There is a front and back side to this set. There is literally no corner of this set that doesn't have some type of feature or detail. There's no blank space. Here, there is always something to be seen, which is just really incredible. As you can see, the set actually splits up into three different sections, making it fully modular. This makes it obviously easy to transport it between rooms or wherever you're taking Rivendell to, but it also means that you get far more details that you can look inside the set and discover new items. But first, I need to address the roof. I think a lot of people were definitely curious to whether this is gonna be a problem building. Are you literally going to die placing these one by one tiles and trying to make sure they're perfectly aligned? Well, Lego thought of that and they even show you a method inside the instruction booklet utilizing a long Lego plate to simply push them into a straight direction. I, on the other hand, went a different way. I actually think using the brick separator and sliding it along the tiles is the best way. I find that to be a little bit more easy, but you can do the Lego method or mine. It's up to you. So as we're taking a 360 degree look at the tower section, as we can see, you can take the actual top of the tower off. In fact, there's some really great building techniques being utilized here some of which I've seen on Lego castle builds from Mox, so it's really cool to see that in an official Lego set. There's also the newly introduced fern element, which I love, that's my new favorite plant piece by far. As you can see, there is five statue minifigures and they're perfectly placed and it looks so well done and the techniques utilized there are truly spectacular. You will literally have your mind blown when you're building this section of the build. There's also a hidden area underneath the statues where you could probably put a minifigure. In this case, I took Frodo and stuffed them under there so you can have a little sneak out getaway from Rivendell if you so choose. As you can see, there is some really satisfying uh, snot work here with the studs on the side, as well as this. This is just blowing my mind, this archway right here, how this fits in with tile behind it. It works incredibly well by utilizing those little half circle tiles, creating a divot for the stud to fit in. Truly amazing techniques. On the side of the tower, you'll see a portrait of Sauron. And then as we go down below, you'll see a little library with a bench or bed. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, but I will say that that bookcase is also utilizing some really great snot work. There's a minifigure in this case, Gandalf, to give you scale. And then we're gonna go upstairs to this elvish bed. This is where Frodo wakes up after being stabbed on Weathertop. And I have to say, it looks so good. I love that headboard piece with the elf. That looks fantastic. I'm also using that secondary leg piece for Gandalf so you can have him sitting down for this area as well as the council area. And then also there is a little chest that you can have 
Bilbo being given to Frodo his uh, chainmail as well as his sword. And then also in the background is where Bilbo is working on his book there and back again. I love that. I love that it has two different stickers for the front side and inside the book. So a nice little writing area for Bilbo to reflect on all of his different adventures from the Hobbit trilogy. So this next section is called The River, The Armory, and The Forge. Makes sense to me. And honestly, this is such a well-designed section with so many little hidden features. First off, that waterfall or river looks so good. It looks like something straight out of a fan mock. I am very impressed. It's probably one of the, if not the best waterfall I've ever seen in a Lego set with that bridge going over it. It just, it gives that feeling, you know, it just, it's so relaxing. I'll tell you what also is relaxing is seeing how well designed that snot work on the uh, staircase there is. And then we also have some glow in the dark mushrooms next to the trees. And I have to say these trees also, I think, look really good. They like kind of grow into the area. It's supposed to feel very natural. And I think it achieves that mission very well. Also on the outside is a little bit of a fire pit for making those swords. And then we have this gazebo looking structure, which utilizes a lot of different Lego elements. My favorite is how they're using the life preservers there. And then there's some dinosaur tails all in white. It looks so good and lego actually mentions that this structure is one of the most challenging parts of this build and in fact i can see just why if you take this off and it actually lifts off to reveal another section which we'll get to in a minute if you look under it you'll notice an incredible geometry of different lego elements being utilized in ways that i have never seen before. This is mind-blowing Lego techniques being utilized here just for something as simple as what looks to be like a gazebo looking structure. So beneath the waterfall you'll find a little frog as well as some glow-in-the-dark mushrooms as well and then inside this area right here is the armory and in fact there is a ton of different places to put weapons. There's also some nice little accessories, a little light here and those different uh, storage racks for weapons can also be removed if you so choose. Another part that I thought was really ingenious is simply how they attached a tree here just by utilizing some Technic axles. I love how it just perfectly fits in and blends in that you wouldn't ever know that. And lastly, we have the final structure. It's what Lego calls the council ring. This is definitely the most in-depth portion of the build. It took me roughly about four hours to build just this section alone. The entire build time for me was just under eight hours actually. And this has probably one of the coolest interiors I have ever seen in a Lego set. First off, let's go from top to bottom. There's a little tower on the top that has some great little building techniques. And then we're greeted by two four by four tiles with some stickers on them of different art prints, probably showing some different Elvish culture. I'm not familiar as to what these are. I'm sure you guys probably can figure out and put it in the comments down below. As we make our way downwards, you'll see that there is another statue figure holding the Sword of Narsal, the broken sword that Boromir picks up in Fellowship of the Ring, and Aragorn has a conversation with him about it, and he cuts himself a little bit on the sword. It's kind of funny that it's still sharp. And I have to say, this is a really cool thing that you can recreate inside the set so very easily. As we make our way over to the side, you'll see a staircase that is fully tiled off and just has a handrail for your minifigures to attach them to. There's also these little details throughout this area, including a map of Middle Earth, which is unfortunately a sticker. Would have been cool to have that printed, but there is some printed pieces here that I'll be showing in just a second. There's also, I believe, what is a map of Mordor, I think. So hopefully that is accurate. So that's also a nice little Easter egg as well. There's even a little uh, ink section as well as a little candle for this little part right here. But as you look closely to this floor, you'll notice that there is a lot of different patterns. Those are all printed tiles. There's three different printed tiles as you can see here. And there's literally dozens of these throughout the set. It's Really cool to see that many printed tiles being utilized in a Lego set. I hope this is something we'll see in the future for other premium Lego sets. On the side there, there's a nice little candle piece as well as some more Elvish artwork. 
And as we make our way to the back side, you'll see a nice little white bench, which I think works perfectly for Aragorn to do some light reading if he so chooses. Then we have this little sapling tree, which grows into this massive, bigger tree, which is actually, I think, the tallest point of the set, in fact. And it's a really cool looking design that I haven't seen before in a Lego set. There's some really good different angles that you can get through the set by just like simply looking through, closing one eye and looking and see where you'll find different little details like that little minifigure and birds there on the roof side. That's a really cool detail. As we make our way through the exterior, you'll find even more different details utilizing all kinds of different Lego pieces for decoration. And then you've been waiting for this, the council section. There's a nice little area that leads right up to it, a nice walkway that connects into that river area that we showed earlier. And then of course we have to have some more of those fern pieces. There's this massive orange and green tree right smack in the middle, which looks perfect. And it actually uses some really great techniques. And then of course, right in the middle is of course, the one ring to rule them all. Making our way to the council, you'll see that the chairs are utilizing hot dogs as well as candy bar elements for the top part. That looks so good. As for the middle here, you can see that Lego's utilizing a fairly newer piece. I don't, I'm not really familiar with it. Maybe it was introduced in say Lego Minecraft or maybe this is new for this set, but it's making this really cool design for the table to hold the ring in the middle. And then of course we have that nice big chair for Elrond. And when you put all of the minifigures here on the council, man, does this just bring this set alive. You can have so much fun placing the minifigures. You know, you can have them arguing, of course. And then also I should note that we are using that different printed element for Elrond. And this is exactly what the purpose is for. Is so you could have those characters sitting down. It's really cool. Then I, of course, have to have Gimli trying to destroy the ring. And when that happens, if you lift up the tree, you'll reveal... That's right, the Eye of Saruman. I love how the eye sits perfectly in the middle, and this is actually a callback not only, of course, to the movie, but a callback to the original Lego Rivendell set. It's a little $20, $30 set that we'll be taking a look here in just a few minutes. Now, when you remove the council area, you'll reveal even more space that you can go and explore the inside of Rivendell or the council ring structure and revealing different areas like this. This little blue drapery is just hanging down. Something I also want to point out is that I think this council ring on its own with the tree here could be a set in itself. Just one modular section looks so good that it could be a standalone Lego set. I don't say that very often about a Lego set, but in this case, that's how good just one modular section of the set is when everything, all six modular sections are that level of detail where there's just so much going on. And I love how you can get different angles and just have fun with this set. So like I said, three different modular sections, each with its own individual section that lifts off. So that's six separate sections. For me personally, I could spend hours placing minifigures in different parts of this Rivendell set, recreating different scenes from the movies. There is just so many endless possibilities that you can have with this set. I love that pretty much everywhere is accessible, that you can mess around with, find new accessories, change things around, take things off. Like It's just a blast playing with this set. And that's crazy to say for an 18 plus you know, $500 Lego set. I don't see that very often. Now, lastly, of course, I want to compare Rivendell to some other Lego sets, first of which is some Lego modular buildings, which I'm sure a lot of you wouldn't expect. And the reason why I'm showing the Lego modular buildings is not a giant difference in size. I think a lot of people are expecting Rivendell to be massive, and it definitely is a big set, but it doesn't take up as much space as I think a lot of you are expecting. It's not that much taller than just two Lego modular building sets, as well as length and depth. Now, I also have the Lion Knight's Castle here, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And while when you enclose the Lion Knight's Castle, it definitely looks a lot smaller compared to Rivendell. But if you open up the castle, it's, again, almost the same size as Rivendell. I'd say Rivendell is a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit more in depth, but they're around the same size. And keep in mind that Rivendell is modular, so you can take one section off if you have a specific area that maybe won't fit it correctly. And here's the Lego. Star Wars Death Star next to Rivendell. Both of these are $500 sets, which is definitely very interesting to see side by side, both with incredibly high minifigure counts. 
After that, we have the newly released Razor Crest, which is actually $100 more than Rivendell. And I feel like these sets are completely different in so many different ways. We're talking about a giant ship versus a basically small diorama with minifigures galore. Whereas with the Razor Crest, you're just getting a couple different characters. It's very interesting to see different ways that LEGO approaches these big LEGO sets. Lastly, I just want to show you guys the original Rivendell, this little tiny set called the Council of Elrond. This came out, I believe, in like 2012. It was a good set for its time. It didn't come with that many minifigures, but man, look how far we've come. It has been a crazy decade to wait for LEGO Lord of the Rings to come back, but man, I think it was worth it. Now, unfortunately, the new $500 Rivendell does have one feature absent that the original set did have. Whew. All right, so coming off that in-depth, hopefully I did a decent job showing all the different details, minifigures, and little Easter eggs in this set. I'm sure I missed at least something or misinterpreted something, so I apologize for my diehard Lord of the Rings fans out there, but man, this is not just a fantastic Lord of the Rings set. This is an extraordinary Lego set. Like, let's look at this in a Lego perspective. The details, the colors, the overall package, incredible. In fact, this is up there as one of the best Lego sets of all time now. This is by far one of the best sets, if not the best of 2023. And wow, you know, this thing is truly incredible. I knew it was coming. I knew for six months that we were gonna get this set in March of 23. And now that I have it in my hands, now I've built it, it's far different than just, you know, having 10, 15, 30 minutes to explore, kind of take it apart. Now that I've built it, now that I've really experienced the set, man, does this just knock it out of the park. There is, Literally nothing I can criticize about this set. I think the piece count is justified for the price. I think the minifigure count is perfect. The fact that there is an incredible amount of unique minifigures that LEGO made just for one set is crazy. Now, when I was talking to the LEGO design team on LEGO Rivendell, they described that, yeah, we're bringing back Lord of the Rings, but for now, this is gonna be kind of a one-off thing. They're not bringing back an entire launch of new Lord of the Rings sets. Don't expect a big Lord of the Rings thing to happen in the summer of 23. This is all that's coming for now. Now, based off some rumors and leaks, we know that LEGO is definitely thinking, if not bringing more Lord of the Rings sets uh, to the slate, but we don't know when that will happen. And then on top of that, LEGO told me that this set has to sell well for them to bring back the entire IP and the entire theme. So basically, LEGO is saying, vote with your wallet. If you want to see more Lord of the Rings, more Hobbit sets, buy LEGO Rivendell and we'll make more. That's as simple as it gets. And I think this set will sell out on day one. This is truly an eye-opening LEGO set. I mean, I've also seen the fan reactions online. This has got everybody in the LEGO community just up in arms over how incredible a set can be. Now it is worth talking about that LEGO continues to make more and more expensive LEGO sets and expensive to me is anything over the $300 price point, maybe even 250 is maybe a better price point, but $300 plus LEGO sets is where it kind of becomes, you know, more of a collector's item, a more niche thing that not the general LEGO audience can afford. And I completely understand that. And I'm sure it's frustrating to see LEGO repetitively releasing so many $300 plus Lego sets so frequently, like almost every other month, there's a new five, six, seven, $800 Lego set. And if you're just a general Lego fan, it is very hard to keep up with it, especially with your wallet. You know, the average person might be able to afford one, two, maybe three $300 plus Lego sets a year. And so you have to make decisions. You have to decide what you're gonna save up for. And because of that, and with so many like new products, new great products coming from Lego, it makes it hard to, you know, go out and buy a Lego Rivendell set for $500. That's expensive. But the silver lining in here, this is worth selling some of your Lego sets for. This is worth saving up for. This is just worth it. More than any other Lego set that I have reviewed in the past two years, Better than a lot of Lego Star Wars sets that we've gotten. Better than the Harry Potter wave. Better than the Lion Knight's Castle, in my opinion. Like, this thing just blows it out of the water. I, of course, I, I love the, the colors, especially. Like, 
the earth tones. Rivendell is supposed to be a place of beauty, and this set is a place of beauty. Top it off with an amazing lineup of minifigures, and hell, you've got quite a Lego set on your hands. So the bottom line here, guys, this is worth saving up for. This is worth you know, skipping the Razor Crest over. This is worth skipping the Lion Knight's Castle. This is worth not buying the play sets or whatever it might be. This is worth the $500 price point. I think that's very justified for everything that's offered here. Lego told me this set would be priced between four to $500 when we first saw it back in September of 2022. And I think $400 would have been just like a mind blowing value. I wish that was the price. That would definitely make it a little bit more accessible to some of you out there. But $500 versus $400, I don't think that's a massive difference for the type of audience that can afford a set like this. So I think even at the $500 price point, I have no doubts, I have no qualms with this set, that you will enjoy the set for so many years to come. It is an absolute purchase, whether you're a Lord of the Rings fan or just a Lego fan in general. If you have any interest in Rivendell, you are going to want to get this set before it retires in, say, two to three years from now. With that said, I highly recommend it. It'll absolutely sell out March 5th of 2023. So don't forget guys that this is going to be a lego.com slash lego store exclusive. You won't be able to find it anywhere else. So I have a link down in the description. So Philly helps out the channel to lego.com. I recommend going to the site March 4th at 11.45 PM. Get there a few minutes prior to midnight and get ready to buy this thing because it is gonna be very hard to find. I don't wanna see any of you uh, scalping this set. I don't wanna see people buying scalp sets for you know seven, $800. If you want this set, definitely be ready to buy it day one because it will be hard to find. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this review. I had a blast putting it together. I am going to cherish this thing for so many years to come. I do want to thank Lego for not only sending this set over for review, but also providing me a one-on-one -on -one interview back in September that really helped me understand the scope of this set. Hope you guys have a great, wonderful day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.